morning good morning welcome to www.lorradio.com here's truly bishop anderson once again with you this morning giving almighty god all the praise all the glory due to his name it's such an honor and a privilege to be here with you this morning we give god thanks we give god praise for another day God is worthy of our praise. So this morning, with a heart filled with gratitude, we come to praise Him. We come to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness towards us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So this morning, with a heart filled with gratitude. I'm trying to, one second, please. Glory to God. So, um, to give God thanks this morning, giving God thanks for His goodness. Hallelujah. So this morning, it, it, it's such a joy and a privilege for me come before you yes to come before you thanking him giving him praise um, we are going to speak this morning about um, the role of a prophet I want to say good morning to uh, Shernet Jamaica to all the people in Jamaica good morning to you as I invite some friends um, as I invite some friends to come along, glory to God. Shernet, good morning to you. Good morning, New York City. To all the people of God, I want to say good morning for those who are joining me and the, and the World Wide Web or for those who are, yes, for those who are on Facebook who's coming on to Facebook. Good morning to those who are coming on to Facebook. Amen. Glory to God. So, I'm just giving some people some chance and opportunity to come on to Facebook whereby we can share the Word of God, share the Word of God with them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, we want to share the Word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, Paul, good morning to you, Paul. Good morning um, to Brother Paul. Um, I'm just trying to get this here so I can share um, share this. Uh, we ask everybody to share the message. Um, you know, invite a friend. Invite a friend today um, to hear the Word of God. It's a very important message. You know, many people go about... Yes, uh, many people go about uh, wanting to hear a word from God. Yes, everybody wants to hear. Uh, some people go to what they call the soothsayer, the obiaman or whatever, the witchcraft worker and stuff like that because they want to hear a word. They want to know what their future is like or going to be. You know, nobody wants to live in the mess that they are in. People are seeking their way out to to those who are seeking your way out of darkness, I'm going to tell you this message that I'm about to present to you going to help you. Glory to God. Glory to God as I, um, as I invite some friends. Just bear with me, please, as I invite some friends to come along. Yes, as I invite some friends to come along. The role of a prophet. The role of a prophet. A man of God or a prophetess. A woman of God. Those who share the word of God. Amen. People who share the word of God. Um, the first thing I'm going to do. Um, the role of a prophet. Let's get our Bible. Let's get our Bible. And... Um, 
I want to start off with the book of um, Amos. Let's go to the book of Amos. You have to pass Daniel Ozier, mm -hmm. and then you're going to come on down Joel, and then Amos. Amos chapter 3, Amos chapter 3 for those who have not spent time in the Bible. Yes, for those who have not spent time in the Bible, Amos, past Daniel, Ozia, Joel, and stuff like that, you're going to find Amos. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Um, I'm going to start. It says, Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servant, the prophet. The role. The role of a prophet. We're going to deal with what is the role of a prophet and where does a prophet get his prophetic message from the role of a prophet surely God does nothing the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servant the prophet Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, O God, for your spirit divine. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your many blessings, O God. We thank you that you are the God of all life, O God. You are the life, God, that gives substance, O God. You give value to our life, O God. Mighty God, as the spirit, O God, give power and strength to our word this morning we give you praise we give you honor in jesus mighty name amen so surely god does nothing without revealing his plan or his intent to his prophet god god is the one who reveal things to mankind man who have a relationship if you notice the word personal there is prophet is prophet glory to god hallelujah let's go to psalm 60 um Psalm 68 verse 11 because I'm going to show you the role of a prophet. Uh, amen. Because many people are running down for a, pro a word of prophecy. Yes, they want people to prophesy, um, pro prophesy to them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so watch this now. Let's go to Psalms. Back up to Psalms. Psalm 68 and verse 11. What the word of God said. And I'm just going to take you to some basic things here first. Then I'll, I'll just elaborate on what is. And what you are to expect. Psalms um, 68 verse 11. And the word of God read. Watch this now. So I, I, another word for um, prophecy is announcement announcement glory to god so the lord announced the word the lord announced the word the king james version said and the lord gave the word the lord gave the word hallelujah the lord gave the word and great was the company of those who proclaim it and great was the company of them who publish it the king james version used the word publish well let me say to you precious saints of god as children of god you are a word publisher. You are God word publisher. Hear me carefully. As children of God, you are a word publisher. You are to speak the word of God. You are to know the word of God. You are to live the word of God. You are to meditate upon the word of God day and night. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord gave the word. Who gave the word? Who gave the message? God gave the message. And great is the company of them who publish it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Great is the company of them, are the feet of them that who publish it, who walk, who tell people the message. So, so the role of a prophet is to speak God's prophetic message. The role of a prophet is to speak God's prophetic message. Hmm? It is a prophetic message. Now, let me just recap. Um, the other day I did a lesson on the book of prophecy. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22 and look and see what the word of God said here in Revelation chapter 22. What is prophecy? So we understand the word of prophecy. Glory to God. The word of prophecy. Um, verse 18. Let's look at verse 18. The Bible said, 
I want everyone who hear the word of the prophecy of this book. I want everyone who hear the word of prophecy of this book. If anyone add anything to them, God will add to him the plague described in this book. If anyone take away words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life, in the holy city, which are described in this book. Amen. So, so, so the Bible clearly tells you that the Bible is a book of prophecy. It's God's prophetic message to the world. And God's word live forevermore. God's word live forevermore. God's word cannot return void. So if you're looking for prophecy, I would strongly encourage you to read the word of God. That's prophecy. You want to know what your life is going to be like? You know, want to know what the outcome of your life is going to be like? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Everything you need to know. Because you're best knowing from God than hearing from man. Because man's words are not always accurate. Man, man's language is not always perfect. It's not accurate enough. God's word is perfect. So if you want to know what the outcome of your life is going to be, God's word is trustworthy. You can trust the living word of God. God's word is living. God's word is active. God's word is settled in heaven. When something is settled, it means that it's been tested, tried, and proved. And it just cannot return void. So the role of a prophet is to speak God's word. He cannot add, he cannot take away. Now we're living in a society where people just feel liberated to say anything that comes to their mouth. Which is absolutely sad. Absolutely sad. You can't just speak anything. The Lord gave the announcement. The Lord gave the word. The Lord gave the word. Glory to God. Whose word? Who giving you words? Ah, let me ask the question. Who give you word? Are you inspired by God's word? Or are you inspired by man's word? Oh, glory to God. Whose word are you inspired by? We need to know. Whose word are you believing in? Whose word are you putting your trust in? Are you putting your trust in God's word? Or are you putting your trust in the words of the world where men words are not accurate where men's words are not always trustworthy uh, are you putting your confidence in God's word well my friend my people this morning I come to tell you my hope is in the word of God that's where prophecy come from the holy bible God's holy bible is God's message prophetic message to the world somebody ought to give God praise this morning hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. My hope is in this one word, Jesus Christ, the who made flesh. Oh, glory to God. The Bible, it was prophesied about him. All that they said are written in the Bible. He said in Psalm chapter 40, verse 7, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me, glory to God. All that the prophet, they must prophesy. Oh God, what they were prophesying. Oh, glory to God, saying, Hey, unto us a, a son is going to be born, a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, and to his government there's no end to his increase. Oh, glory to God. You see, those words come from God. God gave Isaiah those, prof, um, those prophetic words to speak, and they were accurate enough that God himself, oh God, manifests his word as he said in Jeremiah um, chapter 1 and verse 11 and 12. He's watching over his word to perform it, to fulfill God's word. You want to see prophecy going to come true? Look at God's word. What God's word said. You want to know what your life is going to be? Oh, glory to God. True faith uh, transform lives. This morning I come to encourage somebody. You want prophecy? Read your Bible. Have a relationship with God. You will hear from God. He said, my sheep, hear 
hear my voice, hear my vo voice. There is no voice without a word. The Spirit loves to speak and the Spirit speaks. The Word of God speak. Whenever you go to the Word of God, He will speak to you. When you meditate upon the Word of God, He will speak to you. You have a relationship with God. And so, and I'm going to show you some um, example how people hear from God in the name of Jesus Christ. So, the Lord gave the announcement. God has to give the Word. Now today we have people just speaking any and everything that come to their mouth and say, Thus say the Lord. That's a lie. We have to be careful of false prophets. You don't have a relationship with God. You don't have a you don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have Christ in you. Then how where did you get the word from? Where did your prophecy come from? Thou shall not add. Thou shall not take away. This is why people are feeling people because the lies that they prof that they, they're saying they're prophesying to them. God's word is trustworthy. God's word is ever true. God's word cannot return void. Glory to God. So the role of a prophet. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing it to his servant, the prophet. Amos chapter, um, Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Glory to God. That's what he does. God reveal his word to his servant, the prophet. God tell what's going to take place in the earth. Man can't tell you what's going to take place in the earth. That's God busy. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend in the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in God's holy place? He that have a clean hands and a pure in heart. Who have not lifted up their soul unto vanity. I swear deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing of the Lord and the righteousness of his God, of his salvation. The earth belong to God, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God still speak to man who will listen. He still speak to heart that will pray. Glory to God. Psalm 68, 11, the Lord gave the announcement. The Lord gave the announcement. If God don't give you a word, we shouldn't be presumptuously saying to people, Oh, thus say God. God said, No. Yeah, the word of God must link, tie together, knit together what you're speaking. It must be in the Bible. The responsibility. The, the prophets serve as God's voice. As the voice of God to his generation. You hear what I'm saying to you, saints of God? The prophets serve as the voice of God to his generation. Let me just go to Hebrew chapter 1 here for a second. Um, Brother Vincent, please put up those scriptures for me. Please put up Amos chapter, um, Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Psalm 68 verse 11. And we're going to go to Hebrew chapter 1. Let's read that God speaking, oh God is speaking. So, so if you don't have a relationship, we're going to deal with prophecy. If you don't have a relationship with God, with Jesus Christ, then, they, 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 then your words are not trustworthy. Your words are not trustworthy because then they didn't come from God. You have to hear from God. God gave the announcement, Psalm 68 verse 11. An announcement is a prophetic word. God speak the word. God gave the word. Psalm 68 and verse 11. I'm waiting for um, Brother Vincent to put up those scripture. Glory to God for me. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Watch this now. So, so look at it. In the past, the Bible said, um, Hebrew chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Watch this now. Let me read verse up to 3. Watch this. So the Bible says, In the past, God spoke to our forefather through the prophet. Now, 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 I want to see the consistency of the word of God. God, in the past, God spoke to our forefather through the prophet. How did God get his message out? Through his servant, the prophet. 
one who have relationship with God, one who hear from God, the spoken word, the written word of God. So a prophe um, prophecy is a spoken or a written word. Uh, okay, Psalm 68, verse um, Amos chapter um, 3, verse 7, Brother Vincent. Amos chapter 3, Hebrew, uh huh, and Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Glory to God. So, 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 once we, we want you to follow along. So, now I'm in Hebrew. So, the Bible says, In the past, God spoke to our forefather through the prophet at many times in various ways. But in these last days, he spoken to us through his son. Through his son. So if you don't have the spirit, if you don't have the spirit of Jesus Christ, you're not hearing from God. Because God is speaking to us through Jesus Christ. So, so you have to have a relationship with Christ Jesus. Because God, now this is where God is working. Now, does God still speak to man? I believe so. Men who have a relationship, genuine, authentic relationship, who, who abide in him and he abide in them, who have the spirit of Jesus Christ in them. Glory to God. He speaks to because God only speaks truth. God only speaks truth. Glory to God. So God is speaking us through the, through the spirit of his son, Jesus Christ, whom he had appointed here over all things, through whom he had made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. How does God sustain things? God sustain things through his powerful words. Glory to God. God's word cannot return void. God's word cannot return empty. But God's word must accomplish where God sent it. Men are ignoring today, today's society. People are ignoring God's word to hold on to the tradition of what men teach them. Not the word of God. And I'm going to show you this throughout the Bible. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now you know that God is sustaining Things through his powerful words, through his word, God sustain. Come on, say this with me. God is sustaining my life through his word. Your life can only be sustained. Your life can only be egg elevated through the word of God. Your life can only be transformed through the word of God. It is the prophetic message. Oh, glory to God. That sustainer. You need a word that will sustain the weary. What word? The word of life that comes through Christ Jesus. Men need the word of God. But the Bible said from we were born, we went astray. We went astray, saints of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. But now it's time for men to return to the word of God. You can't return to God and never return to the word. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. So you can't have a relationship with God and to have a relationship with the word. It doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. Moving along. So watch this now. The, the responsibility, um, the prophet's responsibility is to point out religious, political, and social sin. That's the responsibility. Let me say this again. I want to take you to it step by step. What is the responsibility of the prophet? And what is the responsibility of God's word? What does God's word come to do? The Bible tells us that when the word comes, it will convict us of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So the word comes to do something in your life. So the responsibility of the prophet message from God is to point out religious political and social sin and call for repentance the word of god the prophetic message must call men to come to repentance a prof um a prophetic message don't tell you you won't get a house when you're in when you're doing evil when you're doing wrong no that's not what a prophetic message does a prophetic message come to correct you to clean you up you see men to straighten you out first glory to god why would god want to put you more burden upon you when he know that you are messed up wouldn't god clean you first when the bible said in matthew chapter 23 and verse 25 Clean the inside first, and the outside will fall into place. Doesn't God more interested in cleaning you, making you right with him first? 
See, but today we are profit telling people, oh, you're going to get two houses, you're going to get car. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Have some temporal stuff here because it uh, make things better and easier for you. But guess what? The, the message of God's word is to correct people's life, to straighten out people's life, to bless people's life. So, so the responsibility of a prophet is to point out religious, political, and social sin and call for repentance. Just like when John the Baptist came on the scene and he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, uh, preparing, the play, preparing the heart of men. He said, repent. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. So what was the first message? The prophetic message. Call for repentance. People are not repenting. All people want to hear. Oh I'm going to get some more material thing. No. The first order of business is repentance. The first order of men's message. Is to come to repentance. All through the Bible you're going to see that. Repent. Turn from you. If my people who have been called by my name. Will humble themselves. Seek. Pray. And turn from their wicked way. Then they will hear from God and I will heal their land. So the, the, the responsibility that the prophet carry is a call to repentance first. We can't assume somebody is a Christian when he don't know the word of God. When he don't live by the word of God. We can't do that. So if God is going to give you a message, God, guess what? God's message going to clean you up, straighten you up benefit you, heal you, direct you, glory to God. It's not just to give you a material thing. That's not a prophecy. That's not a prophetic message just telling you, oh, you're going to get material thing, and you remain in darkness. You remain in ignorance. No, no, that's not a prophetic message. It's a message from man through the tradition of man. Let me show you more. Watch this now. So, it called, so the message of a prophet a true prophet, what you know? It calls for religious, political, and social sin on all three levels. Religious, because that's what run the world. That's how we live. We, um, religiously, politically, and socially. Those are the three levels. And the message of God, cure, heal, straighten. You see, many people don't even tell politicians they're wrong. Many pastors though cannot even confront because what? it is the politician them give them money to build their church and stuff like that. So they don't speak again. So when you notice when when time time of election come, they go to those big church to get vote. And they're telling them who for vote for. Mm, 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 mm. The prophet serve as a, as a source of divine guidance. He is a divine guidance from God to confront kings and counsel them. Not just kings. His job is to confront. The word of truth confront people. That's what a prophet does. He confront. The truth confront. And guess what? There's a war against truth versus lies. See, many people want to be comforted by lies. Many people today, well-meaningful people... Christians said they are just being comforted by lies because they don't know the word of God. The Bible is a prophetic book. It has a prophetic message in it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, watch it now. So, the prophets serve as what? A source of divine guidance. They confront and counsel God's people or the nation. Kings, everybody, no exception. Our message is no exception. The president need to hear the message. Oh, glory to God. The lawyer need to hear the message. The doctor need to hear the message. It doesn't matter what color, class, race, creed, background you may be. Everybody need to hear the word of God because it has been prophesied to say, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Come what may, come what may, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We have to help people. The, 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 the work of the, sir, uh, of the prophet is to help bring people into the light, into the truth of God's word. That's what, that is what the prophet's responsibility are, is to bring people into the light of God's word. 
And until we come to such place, saints of God, we are missing the point because it doesn't matter what material things you get. Now, I, I, I'm not against material things. Please do not misconstrue what I'm saying here. But the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose the one soul that he have? That's what the Bible teaches, saints of God. So we as people of God, glory to God, need to come to that place and start to realize does the, the teaching of does the teaching of the people of the prophet does it help me? Does it deliver me? Glory to God. Does it set me free? Hallelujah. Does it empower? Does it equip me? Oh, glory to God. To see God's truth. Let me just, let me just um, um, invite some friends here, saints of God. Just bear with me. Let me invite some friends. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I will just invite in some people to come and hear the prophetic message. Sister Johnson, good morning. So, so what you know? So the, the prophets serve as a source of divine guidance to God's people. So when a prophet just give you a word and run left you, where did he left you? What, how did he help you? How did he help you? He didn't help you. Because the prophet is there. He's serving his nation. He's serving his community. He's working to help people to see. And it takes time for people to come to see and know the truth. You can't just give people a word and run leave them. That's not, that's not the work of a prophet. Go back and look at the, the responsibility. He's in charge of the, the territory that he's in to, come, to speak the message. Because even in those days, when they wasn't traveling far about, but they were serving their people. Today, we have the ability to bring the message all throughout the world. This is why we constantly remind you what is our mission statement. Our mission statement is Matthew chapter 28 verse, verse 18 to 20. Go into all the earth and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them. Teach them. A prophet job is to teach people. Not just to give you a word to tell them. Oh, you're going to get some uh, a house. Oh, you're going to get a wife. As a, he had to teach you how to maintain that wife and take care of her too. That's his responsibility. To teach you the full counsel of God. Today we have a lot of false prophets telling people a lot of things that never come true and we're still comforted, hoping that one day that we'll get something out of it. Men are looking for comfort outside of the word of God and that is sad. When you're looking for comfort, when you're looking for benefit outside of the word of God, that's being insane. And expect God to bless you. You cannot look for comfort outside of God's word and expect God to bless you. You got to stay within the guideline of the word of God. Let me show you something. Let me show you how a prophet operates. Look at this now. For example, Nathan rebuked David, King David. Do you all remember that? When um, David sinned with Bathsheba. What did God do? God sent the prophet to go confront David. To tell David, oh David, that's not my character, David. You came representing me, taking a man's wife and killing him, put him at the front line to be murdered because you're, you're afraid of the consequences of the truth that's going to expose you, David. David, that's not like me. That, and the prophet, he had to go and God gave him such a way how to minister to King David. The, 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 remember, the prophet is subjected to the king. Because the king is in charge of the earth. The prophet is in charge of God's message. And even though the prophet was supposed to be more powerful than the king, but the king is in charge of the earth. So David could have killed him when he bring him that message. And if you notice that even when Daniel, when Daniel was going to uh, minister to um, King Nebuchadnezzar, when ne Nebuchadnezzar was going to kill all of them, the Bible said Daniel was very tactful. In other words, he was very skillful to deliver the message. He, he had to be careful how he present the message to him because the message is confrontational. The truth is confrontational. And, and if you're going to tell the king, imagine you're going to tell the king, oh, you're going to be defeated? You're going to be detroned? You're going to get killed? You're going to become a wild animal? What? 
you know how what what true it does it stir up an emotion in him to say what you telling me this i don't see things that way because many people don't want to see the truth just like we have a president today you can't tell him the truth because he don't believe in your truth what they call it alternative facts truth is not truth his lawyer rudy julian to tell you oh truth is not truth it's alternative facts come on saints of god we need to wake up here so, the, so God called um, Nathan and said, Nathan, go have a talk with, um, go have a talk with David and tell David what he does is wrong. See, many prophets not teaching people the truth and tell people, hey, the way you're going, you're going wrong. People don't understand what it means to have a pagan's belief. Do you know what is a pagan belief? To believe something that is not true. An idea, a practice that is not of God. He said, that's why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these righteousness, all this righteousness and all this thing will be added. Why? Because he said, Don't be like the pagan who run after things first. He said, And that's what people want in prophecy. Oh, tell me what I'm going to get. Tell me what I'm going to get. What you need is Jesus Christ. Him crucified, dead, buried, and resurrected. Saints of God. This is the message of God Almighty you need to hear. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. That's the message. And live for God. And God will bless you when you live according to His standard, His way, and, and learn His way. Glory to God. So... In, in Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 12, I'm just going to give you the scripture because I'm not going to read, read it for you. I want you to go read it when um, Nathan confront David and say, David, there was a man, you know, and, and you would understand Psalm 51. There was a man who had one little lamb, right? And this king, powerful king, had everything that he wanted, man, and he took away the thing. And David put his foot in his mouth and said, guess what? That man should die. That man should pay a Four times, four fools for that wickedness he committed. And Nathan just looked at him and said, David, my God, David, that man is you, David. And David cried out in agony. David cried out in remorse. He was remorseful. And David cried out, God, have mercy upon me. According to thy tender mercy, God, blot out my transgression. Oh, glory to God. Take not thy Holy Spirit away from me, God. Cast me not away from thy presence. Because David was remorseful of the sin he committed. Do you notice today, people are not remorseful in any sin. Their conscience don't bother them when they don't obey God. Well, let me tell you something, see the God. When I do wrong, it's like a war going on inside of me. My conscience bother me. I can't sleep. I'm not comfortable. I, I'm sad. Oh my God, because what? there's a conviction in my heart. Today, the world seems like it has no conviction of its evil that it has done. Want to talk about the office of a prophet? Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you. Glory to God. So David cried out in agony. Ask God to have mercy upon him. Saints of God, what we need to do is to come to ask God to have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon me, God, according to thy tender mercy. God is a merciful God. And God gave man enough time to repent sins of God. That's what a prophet does. Go tell a person what you're wrong, what you're doing wrong, and what you are to do right. That's what the responsibility of a prophet is. Not to tell somebody, oh, you're not going to get a car and something. Have you repented? Have you living for Jesus Christ? Look at the look at the picture, because I, I want to create some picture in your mind. Look at the woman at the well. When Jesus speaking to her, what did she say? She said, I I perceive that you are a prophet. And when she left his prayer, come see a man who tells me everything I have ever done. That's the role of a prophet. Come see a man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so when we understand the message of a prophet and the responsibility of a prophet, watch it now. Nathan was not afraid to tell David, hey David, that man is you. David, you did wrong. You did wrong. Prophet not telling people what they do wrong. You know, and I don't want to call name because today we have some fake um, prophet. 
telling people a whole lot of things what God didn't say. It doesn't line up with the revelation of the word of God. The Bible says you must not add and you must not take away from this book of prophecy. That means that God's word live forevermore. His word endureth to all generations. Somebody give God praise. Moving along. Watch this now. An unknown prophet confront Jeroboam for instituting counterfeit religion. You'll find this in 1 Kings chapter 13. I'm going to give you the scripture. Make you read it. Go see. Look and see how he got. This man, what he do? He institute false religion. Once he was with God and then all of a sudden he turned from God. And institute false religion. There are a lot of false religion in New York City and around the world. Glory to God. And men must hear the truth. And men must repent and turn from their wicked way. And come to the true and living God. First Kings chapter 13. Read it. I'm just giving you out some scripture. For you to go read and see the role of a prophet. What is now? Elijah defeated Baal false prophet them. 1 Kings chapter 18. Up on Mount Carmel, there was 450 false prophets to one true prophet. Look in those days to today. Come on, let's bring the truth. Let's go to the truth. Let's go to the truth. Huh? So you have 1 Kings chapter 13 who, who confront um, Jeroboam for instituting counterfeit religion. Make people today we have a lot of counterfeit religion. You don't want to hear the truth, do you? Huh? Because you're not taking the time to know the truth. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman need not to be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth, saints of God. And because God loves you and care for you, God wants you to come to know the truth. You got to come to know the truth. So, eh, so Elijah up on Mount Carmel and he said to them, Oh, they, I've always loved this. And I'm fascinated. I would love to stay here, but I'm not going to say, because I want to go to some place else. I'll we'll show you a shocking reality of prophecy. Um, when, when Elijah was up on Mount Carmel with AR 450, false prophet. Watch this now. Remember Ahab Maritoa. Um, Jezebel. Jezebel was Ahab. Ahab was a king and he married to a, um, a Jezebel. And he went up on Mount Carmel and he said, listen, let the truth confront lies now. Let the truth, I'm just um, italic added here now. He said, let the truth confront, let we find out who is the true and living God. The one who called on fire from heaven is the true and living God. And believe me, boy, they set an altar according to the word of God. And they erect the altar and they put a sacrifice on it. And all the BL false prophets, them still calling up till this day. And, and in evening time, Elijah said to them, say, call a little louder man. Maybe your God is sleeping. Well, many people are serving an unknown God, a foreign God. Can I tell somebody? But when you call upon the true and living God, he said, I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things you have not known about. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you call upon the true and living God, expect God to answer you. Expect God to speak to you. Let's expect God to direct your steps, saints of God. We need God guidance each and every day, every moment of our life to guide us and they're calling and they're calling and they're calling and they say maybe your God is sleeping maybe your God is on vacation maybe your God um don't know I don't know guess what so keep on calling and he's laughing because he knew that they did not know the true and living God they, they, their teaching was false they are false prophets they believe a lie they are pagans that's what you that's a pagan believe believe the wrong thing that's what is a pagan believe the wrong thing not the truth and they thought they were right and he said you know since I since I, I am the least among you you go for it because you are more than me and boy, when their God didn't show up, when their God didn't show up, they start to cut themselves friendly and they start to scream louder. And he's just laughing at them. 
And, and Elijah just said, get some men, get some men, and rose them up and kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Wipe out false prophet. God, if you're a false prophet, God will wipe you out, saints of God. I know some of you are not going to like that, but that's just the reality. And if God don't wipe you out in this life, guess what? Hell shall be your destination. Oh, Bishop, you're too rough. No, no, it's the truth. It's just the truth. It's in your Bible. I show it to you. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. And they say, but didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we? Didn't we work miracles? And he said, depart from me. I know you not. You workers of evil, iniquity. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let me go on again. Look again. Let me show you uh, 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 the role of a true, a genuine, authentic prophet. Elijah. I'm just quoting something. Elijah uh, predict that the siege of Samaria was coming to an end. You'll find this in 2 Kings chapter 9. Hmm? How did he know? Because what? God has made the announcement to him. God has to first give the announcement. If God don't give the announcement, it doesn't come from God. God has to first give the announcement. I just show it to you in Psalm 68, 11. The Lord gave the announcement. The King James Version said, um, the Lord gave the word. And great was the, f um, great was the company of them who published God's word. Are you a word publisher? Are you speaking God's word? Are you, are you defending God's word? Well, I saints of God, let me tell you who we are here at LORradio.com. As I say, we're not always on Facebook, but we are always on the World Wide Web. Our responsibility is to teach the word of God and the truth in love to you. Glory to God. And sometimes we come very strong based upon the response where we see people are at. And yes, we ask you to email us. Go to the website, lorradio.com. If anything that we teach that you don't understand and you believe is not so and you want to bring it to our attention, go to our website, write out your message on the blog and put your email address, everything, and we will respond to you. Glory to God. Here's the rule. We're living by the Bible and the Bible alone. That's it. I don't, I, we don't need your opinion. We don't want to waste your time. We don't need no debate with anybody. What we need to do is to learn. And yet we need to come into the knowledge of the truth of God's word. That's just what it is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so Elijah predict. Another word for prophecy is predictive. Huh? Our prediction is predicting. What is going to take place? Now there are two sides to prophecy. You have short, you have, you have short terms that are going to happen sooner or later, and you have long term, long range. That's how prophecy works. You see, when a when a when a person tell you a prophet today tell you, oh, you gonna get a house. He's supposed to be able to tell you when. If you he had hear from God, if God had really said to me, hey, you know, by the time next year you should have. You should have a house by this time next year. Because he's going to tell him the time. And all throughout the Bible, even the angel, when the angel prophesies, um, you find this in Genesis chapter 18, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham and, and, and said, by the time next year, Sarah will have a baby. She laughed because she didn't see it. She can't fathom this. Because in the natural she can't see. When you're living in the natural, you don't see in the spirit. Because the, 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 the enemy job is to blind your minds from the things of God so you don't focus on the things of God. This is why many people do not focus on the things of God. Because their mind is blind. The God of this world has blind their mind from the things of God. Do you know what it means to be spiritually blind? It means that you don't see, you don't hear, you're, you're deaf, you you pay no attention to the things of God. Yet still men want to prophesy God. How can a blind Blind man prophesies anything about God. How can a deaf man prophesy anything that he didn't hear from God? Saints of God, we need to be, be careful. We are to be careful. He said, depart from me. I know you now. You workers of iniquity. Let me go on. Let me go on. Let me go on some more. Because I'm going to show you something, saints of God. So, Elijah. This is 2 Kings chapter 9. 
prophesied, hey, the siege is going to over. Can I tell you today, glory God, that the siege is over. If you are in bondage, your freedom days are now. Glory to God. Because Christ, what these men prophesied, oh God, what they were saying, what they were, their prediction already come true. The greatest prophecy, Christ was going to come and pour out his spirit upon all flesh who would receive him. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. And your vision will change. Your life will change. Your life will transform. You can't tell me you have the Holy spirit and your life remain the same we are saints of God something wrong with that picture when the Bible show you the Bible show you that if and when God intervened in a man's life things change things change true true faith transform life true faith genuine faith transform life if your faith is not genuine if your life if your knowledge is not genuine or truth about God your life will never change and that's just the truth Predictive prophecy. It categorizes into to the near terms and far terms. For example, watch this now. Watch this now. I'm going to show you. This way I want to spend some time. I'm going to go, go there. Let me just say that. We're going to go to the book of Jeremiah. We're going to go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 28, verse um, 12 to 17. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 12 to 17. I'm going to spend some time there. That's where I want to spend more, most of my time. Then move on from there. Watch, watch this now. The prophet Jeremiah announced that Ananiah would die within a year. Let's go our, to our Bible there. Let me show you a true prophecy. Because, I, 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 and you see, if the prophet is not careful how he deliver his message, he's going to get killed himself or put in prison. Because all through the Bible, that's what you see would happen. You know, man say, oh, oh, don't go call Elijah. Uh, don't call this one because, you know something, they never say anything good what we want to hear. See, that's what people want to hear, what they want to hear. They don't want to hear what God has to say. This is why man having a hard time of being God. If you go back from Genesis, that's why I will take you back to Genesis. Man having a hard time of being God's commandment. Man always want to do things his way. And until you repent of your way of doing things, your life is not transforming. You have no relationship with God until you start to submit yourself to God's will. Not my will, but thy will be done, God. And that's what it is. It means that you surrender your way. Your ways are not working. Don't you see that your ways are not working? Jesus um, said to Isaiah, tell the, my people that my ways are not their way, neither my thoughts are their thoughts, but as the heaven is higher than the earth, so is my ways higher than, than their ways. Oh, glory to God, and my thoughts are, not, are, are higher than their thoughts. Isaiah 55, 6, um, 6 through 8. Saints of God, when you become a child of God, you, did, you, you adapt the mind of God. You adapt the thoughts of God, the spirit of God, the word of God, the life of God, the character of God. That's what a true relationship is all about. You change. True faith, authentic faith, transform life. Fake faith don't change life. It make you go in around in circle. As the children of Israel, they went around in circle for 40 years till they die. They drop and dead. They die in the wilderness. Because the word of God was not embedded in them. The word of God did not live in them. They didn't pay attention to the word of God. They were just listening to what, um, what men said and what, um, uh, and what they wanted to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We want to teach you the truth about the word of God. If you don't have a relationship with the word of God. If you're not finding yourself submitting to the word of God. Even when you're about to sin. The word of God is supposed to. Uh, child, uh, uh, no my child. Don't go there. Don't go there. Restricted, you see the big side. Restricted, they are restricted here. I cannot go in, and so we need to come to understand the rule of a prophet. Not telling people what they want. No, he called you to repent. You see, that's what a true prophet does. Call you to repent, confront you with the truth, the hard truth. And let me tell you something the truth is painful, but it's beneficial. The truth is where, when the truth confronts you, Saint of God, you know how foolish, how silly you can feel and look or sound and how shameful. But all you got to remember, God did not come to condemn you. God come to straighten you out. Jeremiah 
Jeremiah 28 I said I was going to go to 12 through 17 let's go to Jeremiah 28 let me show you something saints of God look what the responsibility of the prophet was and so watch this now <coughs> Jeremiah chapter 28 verse 12 said shortly after after the prophet Ananiah had broken the yoke of the neck of the prophet Jeremiah the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah did you see that the word, the prophetic message from God. That's why you see all throughout the Bible, you see the prophet them using the word. And the word came unto me and speak unto me. For many of you, the word never speak to you. Because you're looking to hear from God outside of his word. You got to hear the word because the word speaks. Somebody says, speak to my word. Father, let, you, let the spirit of thy word speak to my conscience. Speak to my heart. Speak to my mind. Speak to my soul, God. Speak. Let the word. You have to allow the word of God to speak to you. You got to personalize the word of God. Let it speak to you. Glory to God. So the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Watch this now. The prophet. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah verse 30 go and tell go and tell you see that you see you, you, you see what an assignment is you see what is a, um, a prophet assignment is go say what God said go represent God so no God is directing and we teach a message sent and went when you went you say what you want to say but when God sent you on an assignment he gave you specific things to say and specific things to do glory to God somebody need to praise God we're talking about prophet telling people oh you're going to get a and they can't tell you where you're getting the money from how you gonna maintain it that's a lie because guess what elijah tell the woman he said listen woman, what do you have in your house what do you have in your house she said well i servant have much, not much enough i have a little bit of oil he said all right get what you're gonna do now go get some battle you go get some battle Close the door behind you. Fill the bottle up. Oh, with oil. Until it's finished. Glory to God. Borrow as much bottle you want. Oh, glory to God. See, when the prophet guidance cannot lead you wrong, saints of God, wake up. America, God's people and around the world, you are to wake up and live and recognize the truth. Because it's written. So, he said to her, he said, go borrow your neighbor them bottle. And when you finish, come back to me. When you finish doing that, step one first. When you finish, you come back. So when I say, well, well, um, when a prophet going to tell you, you're going to get a house and a car, he need to tell you where you're getting the money from and how you're going to maintain it. Mm -hmm. ah. Well, Bishop, I don't agree with that. Well, well, you can disagree with the Bible as much as you want because that's has always been the purpose of mankind to disagree with God's word. Well, I don't like how you speak, Bishop and this. Okay, the good. Keep on finding this. Let me tell you what the word of God said also too. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 21 or 22, there it said, Man is without excuse. You have no excuse. So if we could just stop all our excuse and submit to the authority, the sovereignty of God's word, we will see God will never lead you wrong. Let's read on. So when she go that he said, No, go sell all the oil. Now, if she never been a salesperson before, now she learned to be a salesperson. Pride is God. We're talking about a prophet, a, a prophet wife, you know. A prophet wife who maybe she used to sit up on the pulpit and, you know, like all today, men have their wife and they honor their wife and magnify their wife and all that. And have their congregation worshiping their wife and stuff like that. No, no, no. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me leave that alone. Let's come on. Let me go back to, 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 to the... <laughs> verse 14, Jeremiah 28, verse 14. Watch it out. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, say. I will put an iron yoke on your neck of all these nations to make them serve King Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon. And they, watch it now, <clears throat> and they will serve him and I will even give him control over the wild animal. Verse 15. The prophet Jeremiah said to Ananiah. The prophet. Listen Ananiah. The Lord has not sent you. Oh my God. War. War. Do you see that now? War about to break out. War is about to break out. So here is confrontational law. 
two prophets meet. One is lie, one is true. Come on, can you see the image? Can you, can, 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 can you see the image of God and Satan? One is a liar, one is true. Come on, can you see the reality? Satan is the father of every false prophet in America, around the world, and anywhere they go, Satan is the father of all lies. Jesus make it clear in John chapter 8. Jesus made this very clear. So what you know, two prophets, one is a lion and one is true. They are prophesying. Come on. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you with me, saints of God? This is, this is crucial to understand. Evangelist, good morning. This is crucial to understand. So, so Jeremiah said, hey, wait a minute. God has not sent you Ananiah. And let's see what happened. Look at this. He said, the Lord has not sent you. This is what God said. The Lord has not sent you. Yet you persuade this nation to trust in lies. Uh-huh. Ah. Oh, God Almighty, help us, deliver us from all evil, God. Do you see what the false prophet does? Persuade people to believe. Comfort them with a lie. To trust in a lie. That's what most people believe today, in a lie. Not the truth. They're not interested in the truth. They're more interested in comforting. Oh, just tell me something good going to happen, man. And that's, that will suffice me. That will make me happy. You know, you know, they have a little saying in Jamaica. Promise is a comfort to a fool. Fake promise. Let's call it what they will call it today. Fake promise is a comfort to a fool. Because a prophet is lying to them and they believe him. And guess what? They believe the false prophet more than they believe the truthful prophet. Because you know they put Jeremiah uh, in, in prison too. Glory to God. They even take, Jeremiah becomes so discouraged at one point that he decides, I'm not even going to preach the gospel no more. Yeah, he threw the towel in. But the God would not have it to be. And one day Jeremiah get up and said, My God, I feel fire shut up in my bones. Uh, oh, come on, somebody, you know God wants you to speak the word of God, but fear had scripple you. Oh, glory to God. But I come to tell somebody, rise and shine and go forth, because the Lord thy God is with you. Saints of God, it's time for we to wake up and live and rise and shine and go forth. The Lord is with you when you are with God, when you call upon the name of God. God will hear you. God will answer you. God will direct your step. It's me God standing in the needs of your counsel God. Counsel me O thou almighty God. Counsel me God. Deliver me from secret sin. Deliver me from the lies that I've come to believe God. So, so Jeremiah said to him, say, you have caused these people this nation, you have persuaded the nation to trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord said. I am about to remove you from the face of the hurt. Oh God Almighty. I'm about to kill you. I'm about to take you out of here, you false prophet. God said, I'm going to take you out. And Jeremiah have to tell it to him as it is. Hmm? <clears throat> it didn't even give him a chance to, even to repent. Didn't even give it. I think God did adjust it enough of him. Because he, look, listen to what he does. He persuaded the nation to trust. The nations to trust. To show you how powerful he is in his lies. Lie is a wicked powerful thing. And yet many of us not looking for the truth. I told you church is not a place for you to go and daydream. You better be careful what people teach you. See if it's in the back. You go to church, you don't have a pen. You don't have a notebook. Guess what? Then what did you, what did you go there to learn? What did you go there to do? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Because I am meek and I'm lowly. Right? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So, look at this saints of God. So he said, what is now? I'm about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year you are going to die. Did you see the prophecy? This year you are going to die. Hallelujah. This year you are going to die. And watch this now, saints of God. Look at this. Look at this. Now he said, this year you are going to die. And um, die. Because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. Do you see what happened when we don't speak the word of God? When we don't say what the word of God says? You are rebelling against God. False prophet. 
I'm speaking to false, false prophet. That's what a false prophet does. They confront, they oppose the truth. They fight against the truth. That's what a false prophet does. And, and uh, saints of God, don't just look on the word as a prophet, as just a person in the office. Because guess what? You and I who represent God, as the Bible said in Joel chapter 2, prophesied in Joel chapter 2 and said, In the last days, uh, I'm going to pour up my spirit upon all flesh. You, um, the old man shall dream dreams, and the young man shall have a vision, and they shall prophesy. You see, because the spirit of prophecy is in you. So it's not just a prophet alone. You see, that's why now you can understand why people call themselves prophet, but they don't understand the role and the responsibility that come with that word prophet. You understand? So a prophet is one who have a relationship with Christ Jesus. Revelation chapter 19 verse 9 and 10. And the angel appeared to John and spoke to John. And John bowed down to him and said, no, no, don't do that because I'm a fellow servant like you. Guess what? And the Bible said, he said, get up. These words are trustworthy. Write the vision down. These words are trustworthy and true. And he said to him, he said, guess what? The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. I want you to hear that sense of God. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony, let me say this again. The testimony, the old Bible is the testimony of God. So if you're going to be, you, you consider yourself to be prophet or prophet, guess what? You may say, oh, that's not me. You may not want that response, but you can't say you're a Christian and then, then you don't carry the testimony of Jesus Christ. It wouldn't make no sense. Glory to God. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation chapter um, 19 and 10 tells you that. Do you have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Whose testimony do you have? Whose testimony are you magnifying? Whose testimony are you celebrating? Is it the testimony of man or the testimony of God? Or if you're a child of God, then you are to have the testimony of God. Because the Bible said in Revelation chapter 12 also too, we overcome the dragon, the devil, that old serpent that deceived the old world. Let me tell you what it said. That deceived the old world. You have been deceived. You have been, as they say, bamboozled. You have been tricked. You have been brainwashed. You have been conned. Somebody zoom you. And the Bible said the devil has deceived the whole world. That includes me too. How did I overcome it? I have to repent and go back to the word of God. Now see, many don't want to hear that truth. You have been deceived. Oh, oh not me. No, no, no. Oh, you haven't read the book. You have not personalized the word of God. Because God's word cannot, be, cannot lie. God is impossible for God to lie. It is totally impossible for God to lie. So he told him, he said, listen, Anana, before, before this year is over, the year is over, you're going to die. That's what Jeremiah told him. Because you preach rebellion against the Lord. And the Bible said, in the seventh month of that same year, Ananiah, the prophet, died. Who, who told Jeremiah? Yeah, yeah. See, now people would say, um, words are power. And, and you better believe words are power. Words are power. So you have to be careful what people are saying to you. Words are power. There is life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you have to be careful what you say. Because what you say, you shall have the result of what you said. What you say. So when you have your children, don't talk negative things to that child. Don't prophesy that lie to that child. Oh, you're just like your father. You're not coming to nothing. Oh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You murder people. We have more, more murderers than we have um, people who go around kill people with guns. And I'm not saying you should kill people at all. But you have more, more murderer in this world than you could ever imagine. But just because you don't see it that way, you don't think that way. People murder people with their mouth. Put that spell upon them. Condemn them, oh God Almighty, saints of God. The Bible says your mouth is filled with deadly poison. Be ye careful of the word that you speak, saints of God. It's time for we to return to the word of God and return to life in God Almighty. Hallelujah. So, as what Jeremiah said came true. Yes, he can. Honestly. Now let's start now. Let's reason now. Honestly, millions of Christians are looking for a result or benefit outside of God's word. What, what did Jeremiah say? Did it come true? Whose word was it? Whose word was it? It wasn't Jeremiah's word. That was word from God. 
It was word from God. See, and that's why many of you don't know how to detect words from God or words from men. You have to have the discernment. What, is he speaking the word of God? Or is he speaking out of his experience, out of his knowledge? No, no. I'm speaking the word of God. I'm showing you. That's why Jesus said, the word I speak, they are not my word. But rather the Father living in me, who is doing the work. Huh? The word, if you work the word, whatever word you sow, the word is a seed. When you plant it, it grows. It produces harvest. And you may not like the harvest the word is producing because you're not choosing your word carefully. Grievous word, stir up anger, but gentle word, turn it away wrath. Uh, glory to God. So when a prophet is going to be, that's what, why do you think most of these big church don't talk about politicians? Because they're afraid of the politician. They're afraid of the government. That's what they do. They're afraid, so they keep silent. They don't want, they walk in a silent road. They deny God eh, publicly and then behind closed door behind wall. They want to shout and dance. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what they want to do. But if you're a true prophet, you ought to let the public know that you're a man of God, you're a woman of God, and you stand with the word of God. And you're a contender and a defender of the faith of Almighty God. Many of us are living in prison. You know, I did that message. It's on YouTube too, as much as it's on the Facebook. Are, are, are on, on the website. What you know? Many of us are prisons for lies. We are in prison because of the lies we come to believe. We are in darkness. We are ignorant. Satan has blind your, your mind from the things of God. You can't think on the things of God. You have not meditated upon things. You don't have the time to do it because what? the cares of this world it become more attractive to you than the things of God. Millions of Christians are looking for results. Outside of the word of God. Yeah, you want benefit. You want the substance outside of the word of God. To tell you anything and you believe it. Moving along. Moving along. Glory to God. False prophet persuaded people to trust in life. That's what a false prophet does. So you have to know the difference. I, is this person trying to persuade me? And many of us who don't know the truth. Guess what? You are not going to know the truth because you don't have that relationship with the word of God. When people trap, a pagan is somebody who trap in a culture of belief, ideas and behavior. That's a pagan believer. That is what a pagan believer is all about. He trap in a belief that he come to hold on to some belief that is not of God. A true prophet predicts Prediction always come true. A true prophet prediction always come true. And their words never contradict previous revelation. Mm. Oh God, let me stay right there. Let me stay there. Good morning, um, Sister Mackenzie. Spain, good morning. All the people in Spain, good morning. Glory to God. What is now? A true prophet prediction always come true. And their words never contradict Previous revelation. You see, so when people think that they are a prophet and their and their prophecy contradict what was have already been said, then you know that's a lie. Mm. Oh God, I want to take my time there. I want to show it to you. Watch it. You go back and look on all the prophets and the apostles. Them. What they always refer back. Go back to the word of God. What did the word of God? Why did Paul go on trial? Because of the word of God. Because Paul started to preach. Watch it now. And, and, and because they didn't understand what was um, predict or prophesied. Watch it now. Paul believed in the resurrection. The Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. And they say, no, no, we got to kill this guy because he's advocating teaching foreign teaching to us. This is not what we, our, our custom, this is not what the law said. So Paul was on trial for preaching the message of the resurrection, which was in the Bible, that it, this Christ was going to come and suffer, bled and die, and re rise again and give power to man. And they say, ah, we don't believe that. We don't believe that. We don't believe in the resurrection. While the Pharisees believe in the resurrection, the Sadducees. So you see, the nation divided. That's what we have today, a divided world. So everybody trying to promote their own knowledge. But a true prophet prediction always comes true. And it never contradicts past revelation. 
If you notice, all the prophets that were prophesied one thing, Christ Jesus. They were in agreement when this Christ come, when this Christ come, when this Christ come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this now. The Bible said, and I've said it because I'm coming to a close because I don't want the message to be too long. We're going to uh, continue this message um, Tuesday, um, uh, Monday evening. Most likely Tuesday. Um, Romans chapter 16 and verse 20. That the God of peace will soon crush Satan. Well, that took place a long time ago. Crush the head of Satan under your feet. And I tell you, a long time ago, Satan is brain dead. The only thing that living is his lies that people come to give life to. Satan not doing you nothing. Jesus came into this world as it was said. For this reason the Son of God has made manifest that he may destroy the work of the devil. So did he did because that was predicted. Hmm? That was foreseen. That was foretold. So guess what? What's happening now? Did Jesus, did what the prophet them predict? Did it come true? Yes or no? The answer is yes. It came true. It came true. And it did as what they say. Because their word, their teaching came from God. I show you a book of Isaiah chapter 6 again. When Isaiah was under King Uzziah, he was under earthly authority. When you're under earthly institution, earthly knowledge, you don't see it. It blinds you from the things of God. You got to turn your attention to God. I'm speaking to somebody. You have not fully turned your attention to God. This is the day. You ought to turn your attention to God. And let God give you a word. You want a word? God will give you a word. Because God is the word. Glory to God. The book is a book of prophecy. And it has been fulfilled. A majority of everything. Now, what God is going to do in this earth if God revealed that to us that's up to God but God have already retained. so you have to understand the life of then and now oh glory to God you're not living in the then you're living in the now now fate is you're not living in the past you're living in the now you got to bring your understanding you got to bring your mind to the now you're not living in the then huh? because then is past back then way back then you're living now Come, live now, glory to God. Now faith is, now your salvation is, now you got to live in the, in the power of the now. You must live in the power of the now. <clears throat> Don't get mad because I point out false preachers or false teachers. Because all throughout the Bible, that's what your Bible teaches. So don't get mad. Don't get mad. Take your book. You go to church, get a pen. Get a pen. Walk with a piece of paper or a notebook. Take down the scripture. You may not be able to write as fast as your pastor is speaking. And and what he's, he's teaching, take it down and go search it and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the truth. Because nobody can reveal anything to you but except the Spirit of God. Be in that person. Glory to God. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the woman said to Jesus at the well, I, I, I presume that you are, I perceive that you are a prophet. Huh? Jesus said, if you only know who was talking to you and hesitate to give me the water. Because the Jews and the Gentile and the Samaritan never mix. They never mix. How can a Jew ask me for water? This don't never happen. But things are changing. Glory to God. Because God intended was to bring the two nations together as one. It's time for us to unite in the body of Christ. It's time for us to come to see the light. It's time for us to know the truth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, in today's world, some people still prefer to listen to um, um, comforting lies. Don't let don't be comforted by lies. You're hurting yourself in the long run. You're hurting your generation to come. You even though the truth is painful, embrace to take the truth because it comes to heal, it comes to cure, it comes to deliver, it comes to redirect, it comes to you know because you are born again. Any Christian who don't know the truth is not fully born again. It's not truly born again. Because according to the word of God in James 1.18, by his own will, by his own power, by his own choice, he chose, God chose to give us birth through the word of truth. Did you hear that? 
So don't run and don't take this out of context and go say, Bishop said people are not born again. I said, if you don't born after church, you don't you have not yet born again. And that's what the word of God said. And I gave you the scripture. The scripture is James chapter 1, verse 18. <coughs> James chapter 1, verse 18. By his own will, he chose to give us birth by the word of truth. Are you born by the truth? Have you born by the truth? Are you speaking the truth? Do you desire to live by the truth? The only thing that hurts you in life is the lies that you come to hold on to and believe. Those sweet little lies that people whisper to you or shout in your ears telling you. That's what hurts you. That's why Jesus said, if you continue in my words, then you'll be my disciple. Then you will know the truth and the truth you know will set you free. Do you want to be free? Would you be free from the lies you have come to believe? Huh? Because your freedom, only the truth can lead you to that place. Continue in the word of God. Glory to God. One must commit themselves to God and the word of grace. One must learn to commit themselves to God and the word of grace which is able to build them up into everlasting life and strength. One must commit themselves to God Almighty and to the word of grace. There's a word of grace and there's a word of condemnation. A word of evil, a word of darkness. You are living by the word of grace. The songwriter say, your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you. And I want to praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought me through. To be continued. To be continued saints of God. We don't want to do this too long on Facebook. Glory to God. The message will be up on, um, on, on, on YouTube later on to glory to God that you can go back and revisit it or if you are on Facebook it's gonna be on Facebook it's gonna replay it in a few minutes it's gonna be replayed this is LOR radio and state of God for those who hear this message we ask you to share this message we ask you to um, be a partner of LOR radio.com Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend about the radio station, Saints of God. It's very important. We ask you to share the message. Let us seek better for each other through the word of truth. Let us come into the knowledge of the truth of God's word. God loves you and so do we. Here at LOR Radio, remember our policy is to teach the truth in love. Our mission, our mission statement is to go into all the earth and teach make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. That's our responsibility, saints of God, to make disciples. To make disciples, it costs time. It spends time, time. It's time-consuming. But we enjoy what we're doing because we're working for the Master. We want God's plan to come true. Not my will, but thy will. God, we are doing things, saints of God. Um, so we're going to continue this message to show you Paul is on trial. Paul, when Paul is on trial in Antem, you know, and stuff like that. Well, and then he go on to trial for the resurrection, teaching the truth. Uh, because if without the shedding of blood, because men think we're going to have to kill animals all the time if we have temporal. There's no temporal no more. We're not living in the temporal life that we are living in the eternal now is no temporal atonement anymore it's eternal atonement so we're going to deal with the atonement because we are in the everlasting atonement of jesus christ see in the, back then it was temporal atonement temporal forgiveness but we are living in the permanent now so you have to understand the difference between then and now you have a better covenant you have a better way. God has made the way of escape. My ancestors them was waiting for the spirit of God, the spirit of freedom, the spirit of liberation, the truth. Oh, glory to God. But now that the truth has come, there's no reason for you to be in darkness. There's no reason for you to live a life of lies. It's time for us to come to the truth. This is Bishop saying so long. For those who are on Facebook, we say thank you for listening to this message. Thank you for sharing this message. And, 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 and may God just bless you. May this, you understand that your B-I-B-L-E is the true book of prophecy. If you want a prophecy, everything you want to know about now and eternity is in your Bible. <laughs>
read the Bible. Start to have a good relationship with the Word of God. Build a relationship. Spend time. Read the Bible. It will bless you. It will bless you. It will guide you. It will protect you. As I've always said, thank God for the Bible. It shows me the way. It will show you the way. The, you have to learn to go the Bible way. No other way shall you go but the Bible way, saints of God. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a prayer. And remember, we need your help. We need your support. We need your support to help continue. So please, work with us. Let the Lord speak with you. Let the Lord speak with you. Let the Lord guide you. Facebook, we love you. Take care of yourself until the next message will be coming up. Remember, Brother Vincent will be bringing this message tomorrow.